This is Judge Joe Brown, and you're watching We All Be News TV, the News Free Dixie. News Free Dixie for the 21st century. We all be us under have our one and only brother Corey Smith. He is the author of The Conspiracy of Credit and also is the upcoming name of a documentary coming out in May of yeah, this year. Conspiracy of Credit. Conspiracy of Credit. And it's an honor to have you on because you're going to be breaking some knowledge down to us. Right. Some hidden secrets of the trade, as you will. How you doing today, brother Corey? Man, I'm, I'm excited. I finally, <laughs> I finally gave me the opportunity to, to, to do this interview with you, man. Um, you know, I, I I I watch you a little bit, follow you a little bit, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm excited, grateful, you know, to be doing this interview with you. Well, it's an honor to have you on because I think it's so timely right now because people are really trying to figure out how to navigate uh, this economy with the situation with the jobs. I know people said that a lot of jobs were produced, but a lot of those jobs were temp jobs, temporary jobs, right. low-paying jobs. Right. People are currently fighting the fight for 15, which should be the fight for 25 or 30 dollars an hour. <laughs> That's another exactly. story. But exactly. also, um, hearing reports about in a lot of cities, 40 percent of young black males are unemployed. But uh, look, but you're talking about credit right now. What you know, the help runs to this country, right? What is credit exactly? Right. I, you know what? Mm -hmm. I talk about credit, but me talking about credit pretty much entails everything that we just talked about before. You know, right. The camera came came on. It's about it's about social economics. It's about it's about uh, I'ma say black empowerment because I know some people have heard me say I understand it, but my focus be on money. Right. So you know it's, it's it is more than just about credit because I try to I just use credit as a means to try to help people get into a better financial position mm -hmm. to better their lives, the lives of their family. Because at the end of the day, you know my philosophy is. If it don't make if it don't make dollars, it's, it, it sounds cliche. We know that cliche don't right. make sense to me. Right. So, you know, I, I just try to provide a blueprint to uh, help people use what they have, which is credit, use that, and manifest that into their green dollar. Mm -hmm. You know, to pave some roads for themselves. That's great. So I want to ask you this, but it's like the boogeyman room right now. Like a lot of people saying they are afraid of the times, the fear of the unknown. Uh, how will Donald Trump being president of the United States, how will he affect credit? How? Mm -hmm. Two ways. He, 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 he will help. He'll be a help to you mm -hmm. if you understand business credit and if you understand how to take business credit, get the funds from business credit and invest that into real estate. And the reason I say that is because it is. Mm -hmm. Like you gotta understand, a lot of people that Donald put into these administrative positions, mm -hmm. man, they came from Goldman Sachs. Mm -hmm. Goldman Sachs owns TransUnion. Right? Mm -hmm. One of the three largest credit bureaus. On top of that, what Donald's administration is also trying to do, they are trying to um, debunk the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that, they're trying to filter it down. Like a lot of people say that it doesn't have a whole lot of power, but the guy who runs the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau He's actually been deemed like one of the most powerful men in government because they are, they were created, the, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau was like the brainchild of Elizabeth Warren. She was like this mm -hmm. um, real big consumer advocate. And it was put in place to police Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. So now, fast forward, Donald Trump's in office, if you just pay attention to who he's putting in, in place, like these cats from from Goldman Sachs, which has plays a big, big part when it comes to credit, the credit industry. And they're trying to filter down, water down, take away the power from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which will make it 
harder for consumers that's trying to correct their credit, you know, get things deleted that are inaccurate, get things deleted that 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 they are not. Um, it, may, it may be a debt that's been created by um, a third party collection agency. So, you know, all those things are. Uh, you got to look at you. You got to examine and see how it affects poor people the most. Um, the good thing about having Donald Trump in office is this, mm -hmm. because he is a businessman, right. and a lot of things taking place behind the scenes right now. I wish I could go all the way into it, but that's like a whole nother interview with banking, mm -hmm. with business banking. Mm -hmm. Like in the remember I said this within the next nine to ten months you'll see the bank start to open up and lend more to small businesses, especially if you got your paperwork in place. Mm -hmm. they, it, it'll be like 2007 when you was able to do the stated income loans uh, uh, with, uh, with a startup company. Um, you were able to get 50000 and below without having to produce any type of uh, paperwork. So that's the good thing about having Donald Trump in office. Um, I think the problem is with this whole uh, political, the political issues, the political scene that's taking place right now. So many people putting focus on Donald Trump and don't realize, man, he's just a distraction. Right. He's just a distraction. And I, and I, and I just, my, my best advice to people is to don't pay attention to the distraction. Mm -hmm. Like, try, you know, try to look beyond that because it's just entertainment. Like Donald came from entertainment. Right. He's a businessman, but it's, he won the election. He turned the election into a reality show, right. and he won. So, you know, that, that, that's, that's like my best advice to people. Like, don't pay attention to the entertainment, because that's all it is, is, is a distraction. Get your money up. I'm glad you said that, and also I'm glad you brought up this interesting thing about who is Goldman Sachs? What is this corporation? Because, like, it's like the last administrations, even George Bush administration, the Secretary of Treasury who told him to do the bailout. He used to be the CEO of Goldman Sachs. Obama's biggest campaign contributor in 2008 was Goldman Sachs. Two Supreme Court justices that Obama nominated and were selected were working with Goldman Sachs on some stuff. Uh, Tim, we got the uh, Obama Secretary of Treasury. <laughs> Goldman Sachs today. Who who is going to tell us what is this corporation? You know what? I'm, 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 it's, sim it's, it's simply they the banks. Uh -huh. That's the bank. That's the, that's the that's the big bank. That's why I say don't pay attention to Donald because he ain't man. He not running nothing like that. Mm -hmm. wow. Goldman Sachs. Those those are favors that you see. Those mm -hmm. are favors when you see these people getting these uh, administrative. Mm -hmm. uh, positions, these 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 high political offices, those are paybacks. Wow. You know, I mean, it's it's, it's it, to me, it's, it's not a jack in the box. Goldman Sachs, that's the big bank. And you know, it's interesting because you talked about how he was doing all that living in, in 2007. Mm -hmm. In 2008, the economic bust came. And right. the thing about it is, the American people told their elected officials to not bail out the banks, and they did it anyway. And you speak of the favors that were owed. Right. Because of that. Because, I mean, the American people didn't want the banks to get bailed out. Right. Nobody should be made too big to fail. But it sounds like to me that Goldman Sachs is a legalized Ponzi scheme. Yeah. The way yeah. it is. Yeah, man. It's, it's like like right before we was talking, I said, mm -hmm. man, a lot of things that I've seen take place within my life when it comes, when it came to me being confronted by different government entities and mm -hmm. just seeing how our government not only here in, our, in, in the city of Memphis, but also our national government, right. how they treat poor people. Mm -hmm. That turned me into a pirate. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, like I meant that, like, mm -hmm. so it's no, like we talk about doing business, like I would do business. I've been doing business with people who I don't like. Right. Because at the end of the day, I know what I'm trying to get accomplished. I, ain't, I don't have to be your friend to make money with you. That's true. You know, I don't have to be your friend to, you know, feed my family. I know mm -hmm. what my objective is and I'm staying focused and I'll get that done. That's why I tell people like, especially men, mm -hmm. stay out of your emotions. All right. Like leave your emotions out of it. Like my emotions and my heart are really for my wife and kids. Like when it come to me dealing with, you know, I mean, I, I want to help people, but. Right. 
but my emotions when it comes down to it is for my wife and kids so when i'm doing business like i don't have to like you i mean it's a plus if i do it we can get along but if i don't like you then you know <laughs> that's just you know that's just a part of you know of, that's just a part of me doing business you know that's one of my philosophies um but um you know i i was i was changed just because I just paid attention to a lot of the BS. And like I told you, when I lost everything, mm -hmm. you know, I guess it was part of my journey with having to go and get a job as a corrections officer. Then right. I really had the opportunity to see like the souls of men, like these empty vessels that they had no brain because they had been trained so much by the system and educated by the system to, to only settle for mediocrity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, it is what it is when you talk about those those big boys like Goldman Sachs. Like, man, it's a whole lot going on behind the scenes that the American public is just blinded by TV entertainment. Like, they keep you entertained, they keep you blinded. So, like, like uh, Caesar told them, keep them entertained with bread and circuses. They won't complain. They bread won't, and circuses. They won't complain. They won't complain. They'll be too distracted. Reality show. Yeah, that was it. So we, the, the sports. Ship, the ship be sinking, and nobody's paying attention. Nobody's paying attention. <laughs> like wow. you, you talked about. You talked about how uh, they said. I think you said forty percent of the um, African American males are uh, unemployed. Under, they say unemployed, in, right? In cities, right? And Young the, black man. Yeah. And, and the crazy thing about it is, uh, there's a thing called the Gini Index, mm -hmm. and the Gini Index is really like a measurement of. Uh, the gap between the rich and the poor. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because the United States has one of the largest gaps in the world. Wow. You know, like the, the, the gap between the people that's making money and the people that's not making money is one of the largest in the world. The CEOs, mm -hmm. their income continue to go up. But minimum wage is kind of like, it's slowly, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. still, it's still nowhere where it needs to be. Like you mentioned Walmart. Right. Man, let Walmart say, hey, we hiring cashiers and we paying $30 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it won't be a line anymore when you walk in Walmart. That's right. That's what we're doing. <laughs> so that's actually what they should be getting paid for the cost of inflation, right? You right. adjusted for economic inflation, you should get close to $30 for yeah. minimum wage. Yeah. I mean, because, man, they have, they have people tricked. And this is no knock to anybody, but... Right. They, they have people food, um, you know, because you hear people say, man, um, pay $17 an hour, man. It's, that's good money. Right. It's, it's $2,000 a month. Right. What's 2,000 two times 12 is what, $24,000 right, a year. Exactly. Who can live off that if you got a family? Mm -hmm. I mean, you might, you might survive if you single and maybe a college student. Right, but... But no man, no no man can live have a really decent life with twenty four thousand dollars, where he's able to vacation and do the thing, you know, right. have, have some breathing room. Mm -hmm. But they trick people so bad. People like, man, I make seventeen dollars an hour, like that's good money. Mm -hmm. That's not sad to say, you know. So you trading hours of your life away, you can't get back. You trading hours, you you trading hours away, mm -hmm. and and and. And you wearing yourself out. Exactly. Wow. That's some deep stuff, man. Like, I, I mean, you have all this information. What is the response from the public? I mean, like, even from family members, strangers, whoever. When you tell people the stuff that you know and you actually apply it, I mean, how they how they receive it at first? Man, either they're afraid of me, mm -hmm. or they embrace me. You know, and when I say afraid of me. If, you know, if they able to witness my lifestyle and witness the things that I've been able to accomplish and the, and the assets that I've been able to obtain, mm -hmm. you know, for the people that's closer to me, like um, in terms of my family, mm -hmm. a lot of them, honestly, like, ah, I got to be doing something crooked because mm -hmm. they don't understand. They don't understand they have the same power and the same ability to go and purchase homes to go and purchase houses, to take nice trips, to take your family to, on a nice vacation. Mm -hmm. But they, you know, it's easier for them to say that right. 
as opposed to just coming to me saying, Corey, how you do this? You know? And then for the people that embrace me, they get it. Mm -hmm. They understand that they have the same the same power to do what I'm doing. It's almost like a kid. You, you, you remember when you was a kid, uh -huh. you, you truly believed that you could do anything. That's true, yeah. yeah. But it's like over the course of time, they dumb you down so much. Yeah. And then you, you, you competing to make the best grades. You competing to go to this school. It is stripped from you. You 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 beating up so much. You stop believing. Like, well, man, maybe I can't be a doctor. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, man, maybe I just settle with getting a job at um at this warehouse or or getting a job at this company. And and, and you find yourself living like this mediocre lifestyle, like the dream was stripped from you. And I think if most adults kept that inside of them, you would see a lot more entrepreneurs if they if they could hold on to that part of them when, when you when they were a kid to believe like, man, right. anything is possible. You, you know, it's like, hey, hey Ron, I bet you can't jump over, I bet you can't jump over that table, those two tables. Mm -hmm. As a kid, you like, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can jump over those two tables. But fast forward yeah. 35 years, you like, you know, <laughs> I probably can't jump on. I'll mess up something. Yeah, yeah. Heal, it won't heal right, right? You know, like, so, wake up in the morning and something ain't working right. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people just lose that. They they lose their motivation. They 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 lose that that um that belief that they can do certain things over the course of time. So you know. So it's funny how we have. I had this conversation with my my auntie about this. How she said that how people. She said they become cowards and they get older. Mm -hmm. Like how you know how you used to be so old. Oh, nah, I guess you're naive, but you had courage. Right. You had nothing to lose. You had the mindset, what you know, what do I have to lose and what I, all I have to gain. It's like right now, if you really at the bottom of the economic barrel, what do you have to lose by listening to what you got to say? Exactly. You don't have nothing to lose. Like I was asked that question um, yesterday, day before yesterday, mm -hmm. on another interview that he asked me. He said. Is there a correlation uh, with being poor and having money in the bank? And, and, and I told him no. I said because, you know, you can look at someone's bank account and it doesn't mean that they're poor. Right. But the whole, the whole point behind the question is because I had made the statement, I tell people to live above their means. Mm -hmm. And he was like, most, you know, we taught not to live above our means. Mm -hmm. And I just, to simplify, it's like, I would rather struggle with something than to struggle with nothing. Mm. Because if, 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 if living above your means means like struggling, that means 98% of the population is broke, is poor. Mm. So if they still struggling, what is it? They living above their means. So they, they poor and they still living above their means. So I would rather, you know, struggle with the big house, struggle with the nice car, as opposed to me, you know, struggling with the small house and 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 in Parvis neighborhood and you know driving the car that I got to worry about it cranking up. Right. Like, give me, give, let me struggle with something, as opposed to me struggling with nothing. So I don't buy into that. Don't live above your means. That's just saying don't go for it all. I don't have nothing to lose because at the end of the day, I'm. Hey, I'm gonna die. Right. You gonna die. Right. At least when I, if I do die, if I check out today, my, my wife was standing at, at, at my funeral and be like, "Man, he did. He, he lived life to the full." Right. So you know, that's one of the things I, I just try to. That's that's my philosophy when it comes to living. Like live above your means. You know, hey, I, I, I the only other person I heard say this. Was Kanye? He was like, <laughs> "I'm gonna buy it and then right. worry about paying for it later." That sounds dumb, but based on what he's saying, like that speaks to his motivation, that speaks to his focus, that speaks to his confidence, that speaks to his dream, and then knowing that, no, it don't matter because I'm gonna I'm get it done. I'm gonna I'm, I'm going to accomplish what I set out to do. That's that was very powerful, man. How you said it, that makes so much. When you were saying that, I was actually thinking about I saw a documentary about Donald Trump. And you know he, you know how many people gonna lose a casino and become president? Like, how can you lose money at a casino? You lost two casinos, right? right. And they say he was sitting in the room with all the creditors he owed. 
But he didn't really care about how much money he lost. He made sure he still paid his family and right. paid himself first. Like he said in one of the debates, yeah, I got bankrupt. The companies went bankrupt four or five times, but my family always ate. Right. We always ate. We always had a place to stay. And look at him, and look at him now. You know what I'm right. saying? I'm like, a lot of us, we, I, I think poverty is really not a condition, a physical condition, it's a state of mind. It is. A it's a state of mind, right? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like what you're saying speaks to me like, if you can manifest poverty, that means you can manifest wealth, right? right. You, could, you could be whoever you want to be, really. So what's stopping you from doing that? Exactly. Man, Ron, it's just like this. Mm -hmm. How I'm sitting here right now right. with you. When I first saw you, when I first saw you, I saw you on the on, on YouTube with Dick Gregory, and then I, I just kind of was following you, mm -hmm. and then I, you know, my friend, uh, um, the Darius, the Darius right? right? He's like, yeah, I know, Ron, you gotta. But my my the whole point of it is this: I said I'm gonna sit with that man. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do an interview with that man, and I'm here. Right. Well, you know, it don't, it, to me, it don't matter whether it's CNN, it don't matter whether it's Channel 5. Like, mm -hmm. I got a goal that I'm trying to get accomplished. I'm trying to let my voice and my message vibrate in as many places as it can. That means vibrate in this universe to draw, to draw power to me. Like, mm -hmm. this is real. A lot of people might not get it. All right. You know, like, I also use this analogy, and this, this, is, this is real for me. Mm-hmm. Any house that I've ever lived in, I go in that house with my wife. And I'm already in my mind saying to myself, okay, um, and this was just before the house is even built. Right. Okay, the the sectional gonna sit over there. Mm -hmm. The like I'm already picturing how all of the, the white furniture gonna be in this room. Right. The, the 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 pool table gonna be over here, and this is how it's gonna. But I already see it, so and and, and I know that it's real because it always manifests itself in the way that I saw it. Mm -hmm. But the key to it all is this: you have to believe it. Like when you listen to these other people that are successful, mm -hmm. and you believe in the same thing, trust me, you're on the right track. And 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 and, and before I forget, like. I'm going to just say this because this is the biggest thing with black people. Like, I hear them talking about Donald Trump, right? right. Mm -hmm. Like, really, man? And I said this in one of my clips. I don't give a damn about what Donald doing. He can mm -hmm. be the president. Right. right? Mm -hmm. But you can sit up and think Donald's a fool if you want. Like, a lot of people say that. You know what I do? Mm -hmm. I went back and I looked at old interviews. Mm -hmm that Donald Trump's son had. Mm -hmm. And that told me a lot about his daddy. Like, you can think these people are ignorant or dumb if you want. They're very smart people. They're very smart individuals. They, they, they are very calculating individuals. And they have the resources and the tools to get things done. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I just say, I say that to say that don't put People put so much energy in and say, oh man, Donald Trump, he's a, he's a, he's a clown. He's a... Right. Why you give a damn? Like, start, start, start finding ways to get your money right. So it, it, it won't matter what he's doing, it, it, you know. Your finances will be right, so it won't even matter. Like, that'd be the biggest thing, right? How I'm mm -hmm. going to buy groceries, how I'm going to pay for gas, how I'm going to pay for this mortgage. Mm -hmm. Man, you worried about Donald Trump and, and you know... I know that's a big part of the American life, but you know, I understand that there's ways to get around that. People can say what they want, it takes money. All right, that's true. I want to ask you this, speaking of you know, being concerned about yourself, but what is the National Fraud Database and why should you know if you are on it or not? Man, the National, okay, that's, that's a good question. The mm -hmm. National Fraud Database is a database that Experian came up with. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's so important when it comes to credit is, is, is because it is. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this. They might go out and they might apply for something and they either might get denied or they might get a letter or mm -hmm. they might ask to be, you know, hey, get on the phone. They got a few additional security questions that right. they want to ask you. 
people don't realize that's because either their telephone number, either their address, their name, or someone that's close related to them, like a wife or a brother or a sister's name is in their database. It's in their national fraud database. So that's why it's so important to make sure like you trying to build your credit up. Mm -hmm. If you can start out with a fresh telephone number, I don't mm -hmm. care if you go get a track phone okay. and try to circulate as much as possible. Like when you get that phone, when you get that new phone, you go and you fill out, you get the loyalty card from Kroger's. You go and get the rewards card from Walgreens. You get all the rewards. You get you do everything that you can to start circulating that number because keep in mind that they selling this information. Mm -hmm. And you wanna you you wanna attach that number to your name so that it's not is not attached to any type of fraud. Yeah, your chances of getting approved for credit is better, believe it or not. Right. There are a lot of people that they might they might move into an apartment mm -hmm. and, and not know that that same apartment address is in the national fraud database because maybe the person that lived there before them maybe was a victim of identity theft right. or maybe wrote too many bad checks or something like that. That's how easy it is for you to be placed in the national fraud database or something that's mm -hmm. connected to you to be placed in the national fraud database. So that's the reason why I say it's important that, that you know if you own it or not, if your telephone number or your or your address or your wife or your your first your, your brother, if 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 any if any one of if any one of those elements is listed in the national fraud database, you should know because it'll help you combat when you're trying to build your credit or you're trying to get a fresh start. That's the reason why that's the reason why it's important to know if you're in that database or not. Yeah, speaking of something else, uh uh, affordable medical care. The uh, people talk about Obama care and whatnot, and a lot of us can't afford medical care. <laughs> this, yeah, we just now we we talk about credit and about the, the sign of the times and people having economic hardships. Right. Well, what is the best way to remove medical collections from your uh, from your file? The best way to move a medical collection bill. The first thing you need to do. You always want to deny the debt. Deny it. Okay. Because you really can deny it because it's a third party collection agency. That's the mm -hmm. first thing you want to do. The second thing you want to do, you want to draw up a letter. Mm -hmm. I always say, get it notarized, send it certified mail. You want to create that letter, and whatever hospital, whatever clinic you went to, in that letter you want that you send it to them, you want to you want to state that you 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 would like for them to cease and desist any third party collection efforts against the debt that you owe them. You also want to outline in that letter that you are willing to work out a payment plan with them. Mm -hmm. And you also want to inform them that if they do not cease and desist, that you will file a complaint with HIPAA. Mm. But that's just not a threat. You do want to do that anyway. You want to file a complaint with HIPAA against the collection agency because trust me, if you have a medical collection, you could call that collection agency up and I guarantee you they know if you had an x-ray mm -hmm. done, they know if you had a CAT scan. Mm -hmm. That's a violation of HIPAA laws. Wow. Because they shouldn't know anything about any medical procedure. They shouldn't know anything about your medical history, your medical records. That's a violation. Mm -hmm. You also, after you, after you do that, you also want to send a letter, a certified letter into that same collection agency and draw up what's called an affidavit of denial. And a lot of people, they, they've asked me the question like, what is that? What? And I keep stressing like it's just, a, it's in your own words, it's a simple letter saying, hey, this debt, whatever the amount is, from the original creditor, creditor whoever that is, mm -hmm. does not belong to me. I have no knowledge of it. Blah, blah, blah. Please cease and desist all collection efforts. Mm -hmm. Same thing. That's the easiest way. And then on top of that, you do the other things that I say. File a complaint with the Better Business Bureau. File a complaint uh, with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Mm -hmm. File a complaint 
with consumer affairs or the attorney general, depending on what state that you live in, against that collection agency. That's the best way to remove a, collect, um, a medical collection. And if all else fails, fails hell, file a police report. Mm. I hate to say it, but <laughs> hey, I don't know anything about this. Maybe, but use anything at your disposal, you know, that you can use legally. To get yeah, anything, get. anything that you can use legally at your disposal. Right. I mean, I put that last part in there, but hey. <laughs> Well, I mean, well, you know, that's the American way. I mean, you know, like I think people got wealthy by doing the things that it took for them to get the wealth. But a lot of times these folks did unethical things. Because I, I still don't really know if you can make a billion dollars ethically without, you know, bending and breaking some things. I'm just saying, I don't know. I, 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 I agree with you. <laughs> I made a million dollars. <laughs> and I, and I, ain't say, yeah, I, I ain't gonna say everything was always, uh, uh, you know, it might it, it was it, it probably was a few gray areas, but yeah, right. I mean, a lot of times you, you, they force you not to have a choice. Right, you know, they, it's, it's sad to say, and a lot of people they fool to think like, man, he did it the right way. You mm -hmm. know, he he made a million dollars. He he didn't have to. Man, trust me. Mm -hmm. Ninety nine percent of the time. They did something somewhere along the line. They just didn't get caught doing it. Trust me. Yeah. I know I was looking at, have you seen the movie The Founder? By any chance with Michael Keaton? Nah, no, with uh, the McDonald's. Yeah, movie. Ray Kroc. You know, he yeah. didn't find McDonald's. It was the McDonald's brothers. But what he did, you know, he became, he saw them having a bigger vision than they had in terms of being a big empire. Uh, uh, just a juggernaut of a company. And they, right. they wanted to keep the mom and pop size. But he wanted to grow into what it is today. Right. But he had to do some interesting things. I would say probably cold blooded and ruthless. Right. But that's that's the DNA of American businessman. You got to do these ruthless things because he every time he had to do a thing about McDonald's, like whether the you know, real real pond the kind of milkshake they were gonna use, he had to go through the McDonald's brothers. Right. You know, franchise. You know, he want to put make a person to a franchise. He had to consult with them. But then somebody told him, man, forget about McDonald's. It's not McDonald's the store, it's the real estate. You control the real estate, you can control McDonald's. Right. You know, because like the, the people that got the franchise, they want to get the real estate from Ray Kroc and his people. They were getting it from a, a real estate agent. Right. Right? They, were, they were leasing it. But by him buying up the real estate, he found a way to go around McDonald's brothers. <laughs> it was not, it was a fast thing. And took their company from them. Oh, that's, <laughs> a, that's a cold game. But, can but you, it, can, it is. Yeah. Can you be mad at him? No, he just played by the rules of the game. Like it's the crooks know. that make the rules. The biggest crooks never go to jail. You know what I mean? You ever heard the cliche it says when, how does it go? When, when, a, when a poor man steals from the rich, it's a crime. Right. But when the rich man steals from the poor, it's business. Right, that's, that's genius, right? That's what it is. You know, so. <laughs> it is what it is. Flip it. I mean, you gotta flip it. So I'm gonna ask you this, uh, why credit bureaus really don't want you to freeze your credit file? Because they lose money. Okay. They lose money. They get paid every time somebody pulls an inquiry on you. Mm -hmm. So when you freeze your file, these creditors don't have access or potential creditors do not have access to your file. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the credit bureaus can't make a dollar off you. So they really don't like for you to freeze your credit. Mm. Wow. That's an interesting one. That's something. Speaking of people robbers from the poor. <laughs> and what about this? Why freezing your uh, Lexus Nexus and ID analytics report is so important? Why is that important? That's important because you have so many people with messed up credit, right? Mm -hmm. I always advise to freeze your Lexus Nexus report as well as your ID analytics report is because you do not want to give a collection agency or a debt collector any more additional resources when it comes to knowing who you are or, can, or trying to connect the dots. Right. Because that's where they get all of their information. Like they might ask you, like you know, you have, if you when you apply for um, a credit card and they ask you to set up security questions, they might right. say, right. "What was the name of your your first pet or 
Yeah. What, what street did Harriet, uh, yeah. Harriet Jones live on? All of that comes from your Lexis Nexus, Lexis Nexus report or your ID analytics report. Um, so I, I tell people to freeze it. Like don't don't give them any more ammunition to use against you. Mm -hmm. That that that's my that that's that's my reasoning for saying freeze it. Mm. Don't don't give them that ammunition when especially when you're trying to repair your credit. You don't want to have you don't want to give them no additional resources to reference to. So let's bring you up to this point. Like, tell me about your conspiracy of credit documentary. Did it start out as a book at first? Was it a book? Started out as a book. Uh, it actually started with the first book, How to Outsmart the Credit Bureaus, and it started with me experimenting with homeless people. Now, mm -hmm. Maybe I shouldn't say experiment. Well, everyone, America's a big experiment. Yeah. We all just laugh at and guinea pigs anyway. Right. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's how, that's, that's what really gave me the, the, um, the idea of doing the documentary, because that's when I initially started filming when I had the first two homeless guys. Mm -hmm. I was right, you know, the homeless the shelf dead on Poplar, right. right by Exxon. Yeah, right by I Exxon. was filming like I had the, the two homeless guys right there on the Exxon parking lot when I first met them. I still got the old footage, uh -huh. and that's what gave me the idea because I took those two homeless guys and man, when they got a hundred, hundred grand plus, really, with each one of them, yeah, with each one of them. But I changed their life, like I put them on, I paid for them to stay in their homeless shelter for like 60 days. Wow. Both of them. But while I was doing that, um, I was making sure that address was in place. Mm -hmm. I was getting making sure that they had all the right identification, a social security card, driver's mm -hmm. license. And then I added them to like four or five of my credit cards to give them an instant credit score. Because I, I had like my cards, no lace, like, you know, Amex card. I had the Bank of America card the Capital One. So when it hit their credit file, cause they, they didn't have anything on their credit. So when it hit, they mm -hmm. instantly had 700 plus credit scores. Oh, right. From that point, I went and I got, I, start, I put a couple of primaries, um, got a couple of primaries um, added to their profile. Uh, I don't too much use the, the, you know, a lot of people use a secure credit card mm -hmm. approach. I, I don't use that. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't even say I don't use it that often, but I don't use it at all. Like I would rather take like one of my cars that I've had open for eight, nine years, add them to it. Mm -hmm. they, they instantly got great pay history because what a lot of people don't realize with these secure credit cards, it's a, it can be a good thing for a younger individual, but it, but it can also be a bad thing because mm -hmm. The creditors that's, that's coming behind them, some of them still look at it like, man, you still can't manage, manage yourself, mm -hmm. because you you have we we have to make sure that you know this bank has to make sure that you you don't spend over three hundred dollars. You're not even capable of that. Almost like when people say is debt consolidation a great thing? Well, it is not a great thing, okay. because it's it, it's the same premise. Like when you have to consolidate your debt, creditors look at that as you being irresponsible. Like, mm -hmm. you can't even manage your own finances, or you can't even manage your own credit worthiness. Wow. You know, so, that's the reason why I take the authorized user approach to get uh -huh. that instant credit score. So like I said, it's a conspiracy. <laughs> and it's that's the reality of the situation. Yeah, but um but anyway, that's how it all started with those mm -hmm. guys and it just evolved into me wanting to put out real information because there's so much propaganda on TV with especially with the whole when Susan Orman was doing her right. thing and, and you got these free credit report commercials, like it's just a bunch of like entertainment, like mm -hmm. man, you not nah, or life lock. You, that's I got the whole idea with like I'm gonna give people what's real. No, don't pay for, don't pay for um life lock because mm -hmm. it's free. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why experience sued life lock for being the middleman and charging consumers for something that's free to them. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't pay for 
Credit Karma and Credit Check Total to monitor your credit because at the end of the day, that's the crazy thing about it. They have people so focused on credit scores. Mm. Man, my what's my credit score? Let me check my credit score. You don't even need to know that. The only thing you need to know is this. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything negative on my credit and all my credit card balances are below 10% or right at 10%, not 15, not 30, but at that 10% mark. Mm -hmm. The credit cards you have in good standing. Mm -hmm. That's another part of the game where they, they got people so entertained, people paying for credit card, people, <laughs> playing, people paying for credit check total. Mm -hmm. And they they, the only thing you need to be, stop focusing on the credit score because the credit score is going to be there if you do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. If you make sure you have no collections, your balance is low, you have no late pays, trust me, your credit score is where it needs to be and know and keep your inquiries low. Mm -hmm. Try not to go above four inquiries, like within like within a with within a within a sixty day period. Mm -hmm. Try not to go above four inquiries and just keep it moving. And just leverage whatever credit that you can get your hands on into bigger lines of credit. Mm. Now, that, now that's fascinating because I mean, it's like the system thrives off of people's fears. To keep people fearful of things, including themselves. Right. So you're saying don't believe in the fear, don't believe the hype. Just do what you're supposed to do. Just don't take care of yourself. Don't worry about what they're doing in the White House. Don't worry about what they're doing on uh, VH1. Just take care of business and everything will take care of itself. Right. Yeah. People, people just focus on all the stuff that they put in our face mm -hmm. on, on TV. And, that, and, and that's the mistake that you make. Like, I'm gonna say this, Ron. <laughs> you right here in the city with me. Mm -hmm. In the morning time, you get on the freeway and you got so many cars, you got the majority of cars going in one direction, right? Right. I don't wanna be in that line where they going towards downtown. Uh -huh. Where they going towards Walnut Grove. Mm -hmm. Cause that mean they on their way to work somewhere. Right. I want to be on the other side, like man traffic backed up on this <laughs> side, but I'm on the side where I'm cruising. Because uh -huh. that mean I'm free. And that's how you have to look at you have to look at life. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not gonna follow the 10 million people going this way. Right. I'm gonna follow these hundred people because they know something that these other ten million don't know. <laughs> right. You know, I am not going to Disney where I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna go somewhere else. Mm hmm Cause everybody going to Disney World. Right. <laughs> I might go to the, what it is the Poconos. Right. Something, something different. Yeah. yeah. I was about Dubai, actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> Everybody can't get there. So I'm trying to figure out how can I go in that direction. That's how people have to examine life. Don't and don't be fearful. No matter mm -hmm. no matter what you do in life, mm -hmm. and that don't mean you, you you don't have to be a millionaire. Whatever you do in life, don't kill the fear factor. Kill the fear factor. That's that's what needs to be said. You said kill the fear factor. Kill the fear factor. That's it. <laughs> wow. Like what? I, I'm trying to figure out. You like you always been that different fish. Like you going this way upstream, everybody going downstream. How were you able to be like to become who you are? Like the way you think. What helped you? Or is like natural? You know what helped me, man. Being poor, the first part of my life, living with my mom, mm -hmm. living over like in New Chicago area, mm -hmm. free love. Standing up in the projects mm -hmm. and only having like three, four pair of pants wow. to wear to school to start out with, and, and it just put something in me because I always had the capacity to dream, mm -hmm. and uh, and I guess is why I love California so much because as a kid, before I moved with my dad, he was a marine and. and and he was stationed in California, like before I could, you know, move to live with him. So mm -hmm. years, even years before that, I knew he was in California. So I was California dreaming then. And then once I got the opportunity to be able to go to places like California, like it just caused me, it made me reflect on my life in the beginning and where, how, how poor I was. Like mm -hmm. I just, I. 
I just always had the capacity to dream. I guess that 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 sums up who I am. And, and, and as long as you, any person, can keep that within them, the capacity to, to dream, but but also execute to turn their dream into a reality. Mm. I mean, you would you end up dying with no regrets. Mm. You end up dying with no regrets. So I mean. I guess maybe in a sense I I, I, I am or, or always have been a little bit different mm -hmm. than a lot of the people in my family because I was the first to do a lot of things in my family mm -hmm. on my dad's side or on my mom's side, you know. So I'm trying to even now just push, push the envelope and I'll get to where I'm trying to go, you know, no matter what. And that's just being comfortable and giving my, my family a comfortable life. That point, man, I could check out of here and for real, I have no regrets. That's why I'm fearless when it comes to me trying to put this information out about credit. Because people don't understand how powerful it is. Like, credit is so powerful and not the boast. Like, right. um, the night I had, I ran into you at Walmart. Right. Yeah. Like that day, like that 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 day that I ran into you, mm -hmm. I sit at the computer and I did like over forty grand just in credit. Really? Yes, cause I know how powerful it is. Like man, you can do a lot with forty grand. Right. Especially if you got if you just got the right information. Mm. Now, information is king, right? I mean, information is power. Man, that's what makes that's what makes America so strong. Yeah. They're telling people that the information, they take information. Right. That's what makes they armies so that's why powerful. CIA hack into people's computers. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's the information. Man, like it's, it's fascinating talking to you because it's like you live like like uh, it's a video game. It's a game that you can win. Like no matter or like you got the worst hand in poker history, but you can still win. That's how I feel like to be black here and know the knowledge that you know and apply it. You can win. Yeah. You know what? Ah, <laughs> uh, man. Being against the wall, mm -hmm. like when the chip's down with me, it, mm -hmm. it forces me to think. It forces me to think. And, and, and in a way, like it's almost like I get a high. Right. Like. like I'm you know, actually yeah, <laughs> I high because I enjoy figuring things out. Mm -hmm. I enjoy figuring out like how I'm gonna get this. How am I gonna get this done? Like if it's a, if it's a a, a, a million dollar deal, mm -hmm. how can I get it done? If it's a club that I want to open or uh, uh, ten houses that I want to buy in a bundle, how can I get it done? Mm -hmm. Oh, I know how I'm gonna get it done. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take four people right here. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Cause I know I can do it with credit. I'ma take them to my CPA. I'ma do X, Y, Z. I'ma get it done one way or the other. Right. You know. So yes, yeah, like it's a game, but it's 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 a real game with life. Right. And you know, a lot of people, man, a lot of people walking around like zombies. Like I always say, you know, I, I know a lot of. The African American kids, mm -hmm. they don't have access to information. Right. And the sad thing about it is, it's it's the, it's 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 like I I, I say like inconvenience mm -hmm. is a privilege, mm -hmm. and most black kids, well, I'm gonna say poor kids, don't have the luxury of inconvenience in the people. They have the information that can change their lives. You know what I mean? Right, like right. when I say inconvenience is a privilege, like my wife and kids have, they can inconvenience me. They can call me at two o'clock in the morning or one o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and I'm. It's like, what can I say? Right. They have their privilege, or like when you have people that reach a certain status. In life, like they can pick up the phone and call Oprah. They can pick right. up the phone and mm -hmm. call Tyler Perry. That's mm -hmm. that's the power of being able to inconvenience someone. But the majority of people don't have that mm -hmm. luxury to be able to do that. 
Mm-hmm. So they don't have access to the information that's needed to get them out of their situation. So it's like they stuck. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it, it causes them to burst like a pipe or either die. Mm-hmm. Just die from, from hopelessness. It's like you get a lot of power out of, out of you have a, a really strong belief in yourself, a confidence that really can't be taught. Someone you, you was able to activate that in yourself. And you know, you talk about walking around Memphis and certain places, like yeah, Memphis, like the Walking Dead. I mean, young people have no hopes, no aspirations. It's like dreams have been swiped away from them at a very early age. Uh, lack of intellectual curiosity by design. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. By it's not senseless. It's just I said it's not senseless. It's systemic. Right. It's by design. So what can you do? Like what keep you rooted in Memphis? Because you could be anywhere in the world and be thriving and be successful. You type of kid. You go to California, you go to Dubai, you go anywhere in the world, you can make a way when there's no way. I feel like you know how to manifest things and you have tapped into something that we, we forgot that we had. So what can you tell somebody that's trying to make a way they don't see anything, they just don't have the support from the family or from their environment? What would you say to that person? Man, you know what? I, I, I used to feel like I had an answer in terms of like trying mm-hmm. to motivate a person and allow them to see the things that I've been able to accomplish mm-hmm. without having nothing. Like, when I tell this story about sleeping in that apartment on the floor with no lights, with the wife and, and baby, mm-hmm. like, that's real. Mm-hmm. And to transition from that into moving into a room, that's real. Or from losing everything and staying at the Red Roof Inn. Remember the Red Roof oh, Inn that used to be yeah, on, on I mean, Union? Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm staying there with my, my wife and kids. Oh, man. And I got $131,000 bins parked downstairs. Wow. And I'm losing everything, but that's where I'm at. And like, can you imagine that feeling like, man, how I'm going to bounce back from it? Mm-hmm. But I don't have no, I have no choice because it's like either accept, either accept that or accept the fact that God allowed me to live another day. Mm-hmm. And if I'm a spiritual being that's connected to this higher power mm-hmm. or this greater mind, then I can draw whatever I need to draw into my life to get accomplished, whatever I'm trying to get accomplished, to take care of my family. Right. Like that's that's just the bottom line. It's like I, I think I think what happens to a lot of people, it's like They are zapped, for Mm -hmm. real, through foolish entertainment. And and, and what I mean by that, like, you ever notice, Ron, that a lot of us, and I'm going to say a lot of us black people, we take pride in our poverty. (laughs) And what I mean by that, like, we will brag on, we will brag on the bad neighborhood that we came from. Right. Like, I'll take something like Soldier Boy. Mm-hmm. Like, you an ignorant dude to me. Right. Because you want to fit in so bad that you want to talk about the gang that you affiliated with. Mm-hmm. Like, where they do that at? Right. That's what I mean when I, I mean, you got these young younger guys that look, it's, it's some people that look up to him. Right. And you teaching them how to take pride in poverty, how to take pride in violence. Mm-hmm. That's crazy to me. So it's kind of hard when you ask a question like how to motivate people because they being motivated and they being trained by what I call like the magic box, their TV. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, they, like them frames, man, them frames that do damage to a mind, right. any mind, you know, so. It's, it's so hard, I guess, it, it, you know, at this point, a lot of people, they got to find their determination, they got to find their motivation uh, within themselves and, and, and stop taking pride in, in the pitfalls and the poverty in life, but start taking pride in the possibility of what they can have. Like, like for me, man, like, you right, I can be anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like, I can be anywhere. You might catch me anywhere. Like right. you literally might catch me <laughs> anywhere at any given time. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't always that way. Like I just, I just learned to draw off 
that positive energy wherever it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, man, we 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 are nothing more than just matter. Right. Like we really walking around like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And we really just one big great mind for real. That's true. That's wow. why wow. you wow. might have yeah. an idea and be like, man, I got a great idea. Well, uh -huh. guess what? Somebody else already had that great <laughs> right. idea. That's right. Because you connected, you yeah. connected to them it's somewhere. Because mm -hmm. y'all on the same, you're on the same wavelength. Mm -hmm. You know? And, and and a lot of people have not learned to um have learned to tap into that. Yeah. You know, and I, and I and I think that's the difference between the people that get it and the people that don't get it, people that make it, and the people that don't make it. Like no matter, like for real, like like I saw you. Mm -hmm. I knew this was gonna happen. Well, you made it happen. Yeah, <laughs> you manifested. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> you gotta think. Think. Uh -huh. We were supposed to do this a year ago. Right, and then stuff happened. We you know what was interesting though. Yesterday was the uh, the 20th anniversary of the of the death of the Taurus B.I.G. And I was telling people we don't know how proud we are because you know you remember the name of his first album, right? Uh, ready to die. Right. What's the name right. of his second album? Um, born. What was it? Born uh, Life after death. Life after death. And it yeah. came out after he died. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he manifested that. And like I mean, I remember saw, I saw a documentary on Tupac. He was talking about how when he was talking about getting shot on racket and stuff, and you know all this stuff going to jail. It happened to him in real life. Yeah. He didn't realize he was manifesting that reality with the stuff he was putting out through his music. Your words create worlds, mm -hmm. and what you believe in is your religion. It becomes reality. Yep. That's how you base your. I, I also I like superhero movies. I'm gonna <laughs> shut up. Doctor Strange. I looked at Doctor Strange. Have you seen Doctor Strange yet? Nah. You gotta nah. check it out. <laughs> but it talks about manifesting your reality, tapping into the multiverse. Like there's more than one universe out there, and tapping into all these different energy fields right. and manifesting. Because that's I really do believe that's what's happening right now. Right. That we are in a great paradigm shift, and people they get it, gonna get it, and they're gonna be okay for next year and year after that. Right, right. But the folks who ain't gonna get it gonna be left behind. Gonna be you know, it's, gonna be, it's a purging happening, but also it's a time for us to expand. Like you talking about being a pirate. But uh, I remember when Donald Trump got elected, I feel like I was like the dude that was like the gangster on the evil <laughs> prohibition. That's how like, all the opportunity we're going to have to do right. stuff. And right. we only limited by our imagination and our will. So I definitely yeah. get what you're saying on that. Yeah. See, people, <laughs> people get mad at me like, like, I ain't, like they took a, like one of the clips from my documentary. I, uh -huh. I was talking about Donald Trump, the last right. one. And they took it as, some people took it as, you support Donald. I don't see you black people. I don't want some of my people, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I joke with my homeboy, like, oh, Donald's speaking my language. Right. right? I'm talking what about saying. money. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, but I understand all the other problems that people have with him, but mm -hmm. it's just a distraction. But, man, definitely what you're saying is true. Mm -hmm. and, and for the people that don't get it, mm -hmm. It's sad to that it's just sad to say they they won't get it. Maybe they'll get it in the next lifetime. Yeah, not you know? right now. But not not right now. No matter certain people are gonna only vibrate. Mm -hmm. No matter what you do, certain people will only vibrate on one level. Yeah. No matter how hard you try to like if they vibrate down here, mm -hmm. no matter how hard you try to get them to vibrate up here, it'll mm -hmm. never happen. Mm -hmm. It will never happen. No matter it's like giving it's like if I went and found a, a, a homeless guy who had a drinking problem, right? No matter what I do, like if I go, if we go and and, and me and him get two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, no matter what I do, if I give him ten thousand dollars or I give him a hundred thousand, he's still gonna vibrate the same way, right? And a lot of people like that. No, mm -hmm. no matter what, like they, I, I, I was in Kroger's one day and mm -hmm. this, this older lady, she said, she said. Uh, I've been working here 12 years and I ain't never, I ain't never missed a day. Mm -hmm. And she took pride in it, but to me, like. Right, it's like, man. <laughs> I just couldn't do nothing to shake my head. Right. And I was like, just to say, like, man, what a sad life. Mm -hmm. You know, and some people take offense to that or some people take that as a put down, but that's just, that's being real, that's reality. You You're know, a wage slave. I mean, basically, they sucked the life out of you. I remember I worked there at FedEx. While I was in college in the summertime, we called it the plantation. We were up in the hood, we called it the plantation. Yeah. And one of my friends was like, Master Fred, thank y'all for y'all time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's how he built his organization. It's like we were here before. He used black labor from the South, 
come on the inside, he made money off of them and made an empire off of them as well. Mm-hmm. But like when you work for other people, oh, well, I think black people don't understand. Black power is when you come in unity and solidarity. The white power that is the way the system is run is the value of company. Yeah. Anytime one of us or three of us come together as black people, we, we shift the paradigm. We make things manifest. But do we do it for us, for the benefit of us? Because once you th- you get you working on 40 hours a week, wherever you're working at, do you have enough energy and time for your dreams to manifest? Mm-hmm. For your family, for yourself. It's like I look at, okay, we talk about the Walmart thing. Like, you know, a gorilla in the wild can eat 40 pounds of food a day. They don't have a job, but they eat 40 pounds of food a day. You got folks working at Walmart, places like that, working 40 hours a week, can't afford to eat. Can't eat an EDT car, can't afford to pay their light bill. So really a job in a lot of ways is a violation of the universe. Yeah. Just be who you're supposed to be and then the universe will provide for you some type of way. It that make any sense? I mean, man, I mean that's kind of crazy talk. It makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Cause I, I, man, a job damn near sometimes is criminal. It is know? criminal. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of money they paying people like it, it's for real. Like right. that's how you like what you just said mm-hmm. when you talked about the power of black people like getting together. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm going to tell you that I can remember the one moment where I knew that I was a that I was a very very powerful individual when it came to how I vibrate, mm-hmm. my mindset, mm-hmm. and the knowledge that God had blessed me with beyond credit, just right. with all the other things I've been blessed to be involved with. When I was, I was, I tell, I talk about being interrogated by the FBI. Oh, that got me scared. I know you're talking about fear of that. Nah, listen, <laughs> listen, in the beginning when they first started bothering me, uh-huh. it was scary. Like, I think that, that was the point where I started losing my hair because I was so sure, worried. Wow. Like, yeah. like, man. But it's time, like, this didn't, this happened, like, over the course of a couple of years. Mm-hmm. But then I found myself after they arrested me and they arrested my wife, wow. told all the cars, like didn't give me no bond, but I was sitting there being interrogated. And because these guys did not know, it's almost like it was at a point where they was, they was almost mesmerized Mm-hmm. by the knowledge but at the same time they was fearful right. and really didn't know what to ask me mm-hmm. really didn't know how to take me like a matrix thing right <laughs> I, yeah I guess mm-hmm. if you could say that but at that point I realized like man knowledge when I when I made this statement when I when I, when I would hear people say knowledge is power mm-hmm. and I come back and I say no Knowledge is only a power is only power when it remains a secret. Mm. I really knew how much that meant at that moment because I just felt the energy in the room when they was just sitting there like they really mm. it was I could feel you know we, we talking about the fears like whether people believe it or not it still was like an intimidation factor. Right, of course it is. Almost the government. like yeah, like so, this. Well. Yeah, so <laughs> that's when I really really realized like. Like, man, I, I can do a whole lot of things to enhance my life mm-hmm. with this knowledge that God has given me, with with the ability to maneuver in life no matter what it is, whatever situation, whether it's a real estate deal, whether it's dealing with trying to get a, a loan from the bank, whether it's trying to um, buy a business or, or whatever, like, that's that's when it hit me at that moment, but I ain't gonna talk your head off. No, it's cool. So, how can we see uh, your documentary that'll be coming out in May? Like, what'll be the best way to get it? Netflix. All right, wow. Netflix would be the best way. I might try to independently as well, like uh, habits of where people can. Well, I ain't gonna say that Netflix. Well, you, are you planning on doing any like public screenings and Q and A's connected around the documentary or? Nah, no more than what you see on Facebook and or, right. That's, that's or YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. You are good at you are good at networking and yeah. promoting yourself. Uh, so, is there a website that people can go to for more information? Yeah, you can go to www.conspiracyofcredit.com, www.coreypsmith.com. Thanks so much, brother Corey. You have any final thoughts or words on this segment? 
Now just live life to the fullest. All right, man. Brother Corey Smith, thank you so much. You are truly beyond man. category. In the words of Greg Deville, thank you, you, my man. brother. Uh, keep on producing and pushing. Likewise. Uh -huh.